Hello everybody, my name is Doomfish, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about everything there is to know about the tripwire hook in Minecraft. This is a mechanism that really isn't used too much, and basically all it is is a little hook and that you can attach string to and attach to another hook that can detect when items, or players, or mobs, or some other entities will go ahead and cross that line. But there are some good uses for it, and I'm definitely going to be talking about those in this video right here. Let's just get into what this thing's all about. So first up, there's a couple of different ways you can obtain a tripwire hook in Minecraft, and the easiest way is to just go ahead and craft it with one oak plank on the bottom, one stick above it, and then one iron ingot on the top here, and that gets you two tripwire hooks. You can also get these as junk items for fishing, or as loot in some other like pillager outposts or some other chests, like so. Tripwire hooks are also one of the few redstone components that are actually crafty ingredients, and there's two different recipes that are for them. First up is the crossbow, which is just going ahead and placing a tripwire hook in the middle, an iron ingot above that, two sticks to the left and right of that iron ingot, one stick to the bottom of the stripwire hook, and then some string, like so, on the left and right sides of the hook. That gets you your crossbow. Also, there's a recipe for the trap chest, which we won't be talking about in this video, but all it is is a tripwire hook and a chest in the crafting menu, and that gets you your trap chest. So tripwire hooks need to be placed on the side of a block like so, and as you can see, all this is is one tripwire hook on the side of a block, and nothing is really happening. I can't walk on it. I can't really interact with this in any way. But to get this to start working, you need to place down one string in front of this hook, and then you're going to need to place down an opposite tripwire hook like so, and you should see these sort of hooks get changed a little bit. And all this is is when we walk over it, when we toss an item over it, or when like a mob walks over it, we can see that this will sort of change its state a little bit, and I actually give off a pulse to a redstone lamp, or a wire, or anything else you put on the side of it. So these hooks will power things to the side of them, like so. Um, they'll power things on the side of a block they're attached to, so we can place some lamps all around this block. You'll see they'll all light up. We can place one even on top of this hook, and they'll light up, like so. It won't light up when it's above a string, so we can see this um, This lamp is not lighting up. It's only next to these tripwire hooks. Also, only the string part of the tripwire hook can actually be activated. So these hooks give the power output, but the strings are what the mobs has to walk over. So walk over this area, nothing really happens. As you can see, no uh, no lights get turned on. Same thing for this area, but over the center specifically, these lights will go ahead and light up. So these tripwire circuits can actually be quite long. This one is the maximum length, and there are just 40 pieces of string in between this hook and this hook. And we can see that it still works perfectly fine. Pretty much no delay between when I step on this hook and then when this light actually turns on. This is a great way we can have some long-range redstone, the only thing is that, of course, we have to have it in a perfectly straight line. We can't have string off to the side, this string does really nothing at all, so we have to make sure that this hook and the hook down at the end are connected by a straight line of strings. Now, the major drawback with these tripwire hook circuits is it requires basically a five-block long stretch to operate, and that is generally pretty big and pretty not compact, where we can achieve a similar thing by just having, instead of a tripwire hook set up right here, we can go ahead and place down a string with a observer facing into that, and it gets a similar output. So I'll just put a block here for our output, and we can see it when we step over it, and when we step off of this string, it gives off a pulse. This is another way that you can have a setup that detects when players, entities, whatever, anything that can be activated by a string here, this you can detect with this circuit. But the advantage of this is that we actually have a way to detect how long this is on here for, so for example, we can do this, and it also works a bit better for multiple objects because it will not sort of desync the clock. So with the observer circuit, if you throw a lot of objects like so, I'm just going to go ahead and place this down, just like we had before. If you throw down a lot of objects, as you can see, it's not really detecting them because it detects when an object moves off of here. But if we go ahead and throw multiple objects here, it'll just detect like normal, and it won't sort of get stuck. So this is great if you want a more reliable circuit, um, but there's definitely some uses for this smaller, more compact observer circuit right here. So here's an example of a circuit that I would recommend using observers instead of tripwire hooks for. And so here's a tripwire hook setup. All it is is this little hook that can detect when an item falls on here into a repeater that pushes off this slime block. And we can see it when we throw down an item, we we'll throw down all our items, they get pushed off to the edge right here. And that works pretty great if you're only throwing one item or one stack of item. It works pretty well. But if you throw multiple items, you'll see what happens here. If we just throw a little stream out, it'll actually get stuck detecting this item here, and then the circuit is essentially broken until someone manually comes through and cleans this up. That's not very good if we have a lot of items flowing through this little ice block pusher right here, and so we need a way to fix that. 
And so now I've just gone ahead and replaced it to fire hooks with an observer. And we can see that our problem is basically solved because we can see that when it pushes us across, it'll work just like it did earlier. But when we throw a lot of items, it'll actually work just fine because it's turning on and off or it's only giving a short pulse. And because of that short pulse, the items will actually not get stuck up here. So we can't get a sort of loop like we had earlier or a sort of problem where these items were getting stuck on top of the slime block when it was extended. But they'll just go ahead and push themselves out like normal and they'll all sort of flow down to the end of this ice stream right here. Now back to our original setup right here, this whole thing can just be set up much, much easier with just a pressure plate that basically achieves the same function. Now the reason why we'd want to use our tripwire is because they have a great advantage in that they can actually be placed up in the air. So I'm just going to go ahead and build this up a little bit, and we can see that this circuit works perfectly fine and is very easy to build up in the sky a little bit, and it can detect sort of items or players or mobs or whatever that fall through this space right here. You see that when we walk through it, this lamp goes on, turns on, and whatever you want it to do, whatever output you want, um, can have it sent out. So it's a very useful function of the strip wires that can be used in some pretty niche circumstances, but works well for some things like villager breeders. I know you could use them if you want to have an automated system to get them in the correct location. You could use them in other farms like we sort of did over there. And so yeah, there's a couple of different applications for these things specifically, where the pressure pads and the observers don't really work as well. That's going to do it for today's Redstone Toolbox. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't be afraid to leave a like, and you can subscribe for more content just like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.